So with that, we also have made this method asynchronous. Now let's go on to the post method where we are creating a new region. Let's do the same thing over here. Make this asynchronous and wrap the I action result inside a task. Now this is just converting the domain model, the DTO to a domain model. That is fine. Now we are calling the DB context over here. So let's await on the DB context call and use the method add async instead. And entity framework core does a great job in providing all these extension methods where we have the synchronous and the asynchronous version of these methods available to us. And finally, we have the DB context dot save changes, which also have a save changes async version. So we will use that instead. And because we are using the async method, we want to await on that. And with that change, we have made the create method asynchronous as well. So we are left with two more methods, the update method. Let's make that asynchronous and a task of type I action result. The first line is the DB context where it is checking if the region exists. So we will await on that and call the first or default async method instead. And after that, we have saving the changes. So we will call the save changes async method and await on this call as well. And you can see how easy it is with ASP.NET Core to implement these uh, asynchronous programming techniques inside our application. The last method that we have is the delete method. So let's make this async task of type I action result. And we want to make the first or default and change this to an async method. Use the async version of first or default and await on this. After that, we also want to save changes. So we will make save changes as save changes async as it is suggesting us. Now I want to point out that remove method doesn't have a remove async method. So remove is still synchronous. So we can't have a remove async method. So finally, when we have tracked the changes, we will just use the await and the synchronous method on the save changes. So the delete method, the remove doesn't have the remove async version. So we are just finally saving the changes asynchronously. So we have made all the changes back. Now we should go back to test our application and make sure everything is the same as it was before. So let's try the post method now. And if I click on try it out, I will create a new region. Let's just give it a new region name and new as the code. This can be a new image dot JPG, just some random values just for testing purposes. If I click on execute, this should uh, work as expected and it should create a new region for us. And it gives me a 201 back with the location. So we can quickly just copy the location and see if the resource exists, which it does. So that's fine. Uh, this is working as expected. Now I know for sure that the region ID will work because I just used the location. But for our testing purposes, I will still again try to fetch the new region back using the get by ID method. So execute that and this has given me the success response as well. The put method, let's try it out. Let's give the ID and let's say this is the updated new region and change the code to updated and this is a new image.jpg again some random values just for testing purposes so i will execute this and should get a 200 back and if i get all the regions back should see the updated version of this uh, added region. Now finally, let's test the delete functionality. And I will go to the delete method with the ID. So expand that, try it out, use the ID and execute it. It should delete the newly created region from the database. And if I show you 
on the database we should still have just two records back because we just deleted the newly created region so you can see how easy it was to use the async and await keywords and NDD framework core does a great job to provide us all the support that we need to uh, make our controllers and methods asynchronous.